A key learning is a learning from a direct experience that has materially changed how you do business. Education in the context of direct application you know, is, a, is a very sort of powerful construct. Technology isn't enough. What's critical is to understand exactly who you're designing for, who you're trying to benefit, because without knowing that, you'll never get there. It's utterly important to clarify the mission because everything flows from it. You need to get the what right before you can do a really good job of the how. The subtle shift that's happening here is you yourself, as a founder, your role has shifted. Initially, you were the one who was doing and developing that product, but now you're developing something else. You are having people develop the product for the company, and your role is you are developing people. Leadership is, I think, fundamentally about people and bringing the best out in people. And by creating that type of space, that safe working space, that environment that allows people to succeed, inevitably and invariably will allow the organization to succeed. The way that often that you deal with a situation blowing up in your organization, how you show up in that moment is the thing that your organizational culture will be born out of. So I think self-awareness is one of the critical building blocks and tools that a leader has available, both to themselves as a resource and to the organization. So you can only take responsibility for that which you are aware of. With self-awareness, you increase the possibility and the probability that you will actually get the outcomes that you want. Huge amount of capability and effectiveness gets born out of adversity. And so instead of trying to manage away from adversity or manage down risk, it's to really kind of embrace that adversity and benefit from it and allow it to make you and your business plan and your organization stronger as a result of it. Getting creative about the problems that you're facing in each stage, to me, is the essence of being a great entrepreneur. But if you have a great approach to involving your team in how to address the problems in a creative and, and well thought out way, then solving those problems get you onto the next stage, and I think that's how growth occurs in a great company. Well, the right investor for you depends on who you get along with personally. Um, it's someone who has expertise in what you're doing, um, someone who can have your back, someone who can also challenge you. The thing about exponential technologies is that if nobody can use them, they don't go very far. And I've seen a lot of really, really amazing technologies get shelved for lack of a good use case. There's many different ways that you can accomplish that same objective by reframing which tools you're using to try to get to your solution. And that's when really great innovation is possible. Technology is really a way of delivering on a product, and a product is a way of delivering on an experience, and an experience kind of delivers on people's emotional needs. And so the product market fit piece is really, have we built something that's delivering the, on the emotional needs, the value for the user? From an entrepreneur perspective, you really want to sort of have a good starting point in a market that you feel, you feel passionate about, but know that you have to be extremely flexible. Go after a market that is, is robust and, and at least at the entry point has a strong footprint to create a meaningful business. In that early launch, not everything's going to go as planned, and whether it's awful or it was fantastic, and most likely somewhere in the middle, and you're going to continue to make it better, you need to have your uh, ears open and be ready to act. Your innovation needs more than just your blind faith and artistry to succeed. It needs a market. What you charge is not as important as how you charge, which is an amazing insight. And sometimes how you charge turns out to be the innovation itself. Price is always a story. What you charge and how you charge always tells the person something important. Everything starts and ends with your customer. Know your customer inside and out. Uh, know what they're doing, why they're doing it, why they're not doing it. Design your company and your product around your customer and you'll be great. The importance actually is in finding something you're emotional about. So it could be something you hate as well as something you love. It's like, you know, something that you just 
in the world need to need to decimate. It's like I'm not going to stand in the world and let it be that way. I'm, I'm going to solve that problem. And that, so I think an emotional charge, an emotional connection to what you're doing as an entrepreneur is really important. If you're doing something just to make money, go do something else. As long as you can tie the big idea to something that is in the next couple years is a business, I think investors can be confident in that. And if you can show them the path from that first business and how it scales and it slowly grows into something that changes the world, why would, I mean, that only seems like it would make it easier for an investor. The success of the companies and the projects and the initiatives that go out feed SU and provide credibility to the institution that draws in the world's greatest minds to come in and solve the next problems and then go out. And um, so everybody's here for a purpose. Our purpose is to go out and prove that what we're doing here makes sense. And, um, and you do it because it, it helps the world and it makes SU continue to grow so that more people can help the world. It's a great challenge. I think this is our challenge because we know about the power of SU and I think we owe that to SU. To elevate the conversation of SU is a great place to dream to SU is the place where the world's biggest challenges are addressed and solved. If you begin solving your problems 10 to 100 times faster, then the main worry in your mind, whether you can solve your problems or not, starts to shift because you're pretty sure you can solve them. Like the bigger question that comes up is what problems are worth solving in the world?